I live alone. I live and I like it. Some people live alone. They live alone and look, but I'm on the roam and I like it. Some people say I lost my reason. I don't give a damn for opinions out of season because I am on the roam and I like it. Don't you go messing with my heart again. Don't you go messing with me. Situation critical. Oh, critical. Yeah. And that's all I got. <laughs> you almost brought me back to the 80s, man. Oh, man. Almost. He was, he was almost into that. At like. the beginning, <laughs> at the beginning, it felt like I was in class and the teacher was teaching me something. Then I heard the chorus kick in. <laughs> <laughs> it's just jamming now. Guys, welcome to the show. Welcome back. Greg and Justin. Oh, Generation so Construction and Fine Homes. Yeah. Yes. Welcome back. Yeah, you haven't been on camera. You haven't been in the studio. You haven't been here at all. I haven't seen any of this. None of this, oh, eh? This nothing, is all new. Zero, all new. It's like... Well, new-ish. Yeah. yeah. New-ish, right? Yeah. So, well, different room, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, we were just down the hall on the other side there. Yeah. And then, uh, well, you came to see me at my Oakville job. Yeah. When you were basically doing this part. I was starting this. Pegs. Exactly. I was like, that was crazy, guys. How's that job coming along? Uh, well, I wish I had my kitchen in. <laughs> we'll get into it. Yeah, yeah. We'll get into it. Hang on. A couple of shout-outs. I'm wearing Kohler's tea. Thank you to... Uh, why did I just forget his name? Carlo. Sorry, Carlo from Effect Electric uh, gave me this Kohler tea because he does a lot of Kohler generators, right? So, oh, right. Yeah, generators. Yeah. The only teas or, or apparel I have from Kohler are like um, polo shirts. And many don't golf and many don't like polo shirts. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, though, for the tea. Uh, we got the boys from Generation Construction here. You can reach them at Greg at Generation Construction, limit ltd.com, and on Instagram and Facebook, he's Generation Con LTD. And also, you guys are going to be planning a YouTube channel next year. Yep. Yeah. Get some content going. Yeah. Be one of bit. us. Consumed by being on social media. Well, which we're going to get into, but going to talk. You get you send me a little list here. We got a lot to talk about. Yeah, so yeah. where do you want to begin? Should I crack open the Hennessy? Uh, <laughs> you know what? Maybe Just halfway, so halfway. Yeah, halfway. yeah. <laughs> oh no, I'd say a little more. But I want to give a a couple of shout outs. Oh, please do start, shout out as many as you like, man. Because I think uh, in the beginning, that's definitely what uh, what's been helping us. So first of all, uh, Bins Plus, Valerie, thank you for everything. Hey, Valerie, I haven't spoken to her like. In a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I We sometimes... Well, I need a bin basically once every couple of weeks. So I'm always doing the chit-chat with her. And then when she comes on site, it's always a, it's always nice. a blast. As nice. If anyone wants to check out our latest post, well, it's about Valerie. So um, uh, last time I forgot to shout out our, our electrician, Rob, from Aperture Electric. Rob and his dad has been with us since 2016. Okay. That's... And... He's our sole electrician. Like, he's just phenomenal. And he has the best. He just laughs. I'm like, hey, Rob, there's a change. He goes, ha, ah, ha, okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's so used to it. He's so, yeah. and he knows, It's right? the industry, construction. Um, Affinity Woodworking, which is our good friend, Stuart. He's um, really good at just fine carpentry. And both, like, your uh, average day trim. And then also, like, woodworking. He, he's on the lathe and things like that. He makes, like, little nice bowls. He says it's a hobby, so I'm like, cool. Young guy? Yeah, he's he's our age. Yeah. Our age, yeah. Wow. Oh, and he's like, everything's... It's not my age, he's your age. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And like, he's very into like, it's got to be by hand. Of course. It, I'm telling you. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, it's it blows my mind. Um, Adam from Rosebridge Builders. Like, thank... I just... I don't know Adam. I don't... I don't uh, he hasn't... He hasn't... Um, he doesn't go much on social media. He's okay. just very, he works for other GCs, but like when he says he's going to be there and he's going to get it done, that's it. He's done. Done. Um, his brother is a plumber. Uh, Tom, I'm not like guru of plumbing. Like I'm a licensed plumber. I call him because he goes like wicked good. Um, then we have uh, Clever Drywall. I learned so much. He was a drywall actually from uh, Europe. Oh, man. What part? Um, he's Polish, but then he did a lot of work in Germany and then okay. he moved back here and he goes like, the, when I saw him do drywall, it was totally different. It, it was, uh, what do you well, mean? Why? What was different? The, where he puts his joints, why he wants certain things at a certain, like his attention to detail of just the board yeah. is ridiculous. Like even how he handled it, like it wasn't, it just didn't slap. It's just like, okay, we're going to. 
put the screws here first, do this. And then now he's a big fan of butt board. He actually wants to create his, his own. And his, he wants to do it on his lengths. He wants to, it's just, oh, his head is in the right place when it comes to drywall. What you, he's a big fan of who? Butt board. Bob Ford. No, butt board. Oh, butt board. Yeah, by Trim Tax. Okay, that's why I didn't understand what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay, I don't even know what that is. Oh, it's like, so you know I have a joint, and most people will take, like, on a stud. Yeah. They'll break it in half, whatever, yeah. they'll cut, and then, you, no. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And is it strong? Yeah. Is it strong? Here's... <laughs> Uh, it is, and and here's why, and and he and he's the one that told. Because at first I was like, I don't know if I want board on this job, and he goes, I'll tell you why I'm using it. And okay, if you put two screws in on the stud, nine times out of ten you're going at an angle like that. Yeah, he goes, that's that seam is gonna crack. So he goes, the way to get out of that is use butt board, and have just. Multiple screws again because he's just in a one screw. Okay, so but a butt board is basically the end of a drywall board, correct? In the middle of a, jo a stud cavity, correct? And then you're putting what a piece of material behind it, yeah, and then you're screwing it to the piece of material, yeah. So there's no structural behind that butt now, no, that's why I'm not a fan of it. I'm just, I, I mean, is it just as strong? They've done the test. I'm assuming they've done the test, right? I hope. Everyone knows how much I love making friends, and Trimtex is right up there, right? Yeah. So the thing is, Trimtex does have some great products. I'm still a corner metal corner bead person. We are too, uh, on some applications. I know, but Trimtex is all about the world belongs to plastic corner bead, which I think there's plenty of room on the world for metal and corner and plastic, right? Agreed. So when it comes to a butt board, yeah, it's a lot easier for the installer, but is it a strong wall? I find that it's a weak point if there's no structure behind it. So that's why I'm not. I get what you're saying about you're almost toe screwing the yeah. butt yep. if you're on one stud. Yeah, I get it, but or what you can do, and this has to go back to the framing side of things, which probably I can get into. Then you have to put up a two by four, or two by six, or whatever you want to use on its face. Not on its edge, on its face. But that means now the drywaller is basically kind of like the back framer. No, and you don't want to do that either. Uh, uh, nobody does. So uh, is there a perfect solution? I don't think so. It'd be a good question to ask. I mean, like, I don't know if you heard the recent show with Three Way, right? Where Royce, who's been doing it since, you know, they had asbestos in drywall. Right. That's how long he's been doing it. I don't think he... I'm, I can't speak for him, but I don't think he's using butt board. I think he's landing the board on the stud and... I think you just screw it properly. It's the same way that you can tell me any self-feeding drywall gun is the best tool ever invented until you get to the corner, inside corner. And then how do you solve that? Any good drywall person has their impact gun or driver, and they use that to do the corners. Yeah. So... We're going to make a lot of friends here with drywall. That's <laughs> what I'm just saying, right? Well, uh, Clever Drywall, thank you very much for... No, no, Clever. So, I mean, he's teaching you that, but I just don't... I don't agree with it because I think that's a weak point. doesn't matter. I mean, it's a weak point in my head. If you push in, sure, it's going to crack. Uh, it may potentially crack, but I think that goes back to pre-filling and how you mud it yeah. and how you finish it. I'd rather have a taper who properly does that, guaranteeing that it's not going to crack or potentially crack, and then instead of butt board. So, and this show is not brought to you by Trimtex. <laughs> no. <laughs> His taper, oh, man. Like, Artist? Oh, yeah. Like yeah. the pre-fill? Like, that's why I shouted him out, because it's more than just a drywall. Yeah, it's yeah. The taper he brings along, which is, they, they really, they took their time, and I saw them pre-fill, and I'm like, Oh yeah, this isn't going. Pre-fill is important. I think it's probably one of other than that last finished sand. It's probably the most important. Yeah. So moving along, um, <laughs> actually, you had Kenneth Morgan Group, which touched on uh, Anthony from Endless Demo. Yes. Same thing as you've Rose used, You've used Anthony. Worked on Oakville yeah. project. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. Cool. Yeah. So he came in. Uh, we had a discussion, and within I want to say a day, we we decided to go with him. Um. Same thing. He said, my guy's 8 o'clock. Sure enough, 8 o'clock they're there on that Monday. And they were just ready to go. Like, and everything was 
it's perfect. He um, definitely had some calls with Valerie, just making sure the bins and everything because their guys were moving so quickly. So that all made less headache for everybody. So it all worked out. Awesome. Uh, Crewman Group, you know Crewman Group. Ta uh ha! -huh. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. You guys will hear. Uh, well, not yet because we're recording this, but this you'll hear show number three seventeen soon. So that's when uh, Taha is back on the show. Oh, awesome! That'll be posted on uh, New Year's Eve. Oh, nice! So if anybody's listening now, I guess you would have already heard it. I don't know. How do you predict the future here? I don't know because we're recording now before New Year's Eve, but it, this show's not going to get posted until the New Year. Yeah. But then Taha's show is going to get posted on New Year's Eve. Beautiful. Okay. So I have a listen to it if you haven't listened to it, but it's a it's a very difficult show to uh, listen to. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. So Okay. Well, uh, we're and, here. So. And then one more guy is uh, Marcin from uh, MD Hardwood Solutions. He always has our back. Okay. When it comes to flooring. Oh, yeah. You, you mentioned him. That's right. Yeah. yeah. When it comes to uh, flooring install and just his knowledge he has with, with just product and, and everything like that, like, I, I, just, I have no one else. And, and he truly cares because he works with a lot of uh, different builders and contractors. So he's basically seen it all. And he's been doing it for over 10 years with his father. So he has the old school mentality of we're going to get it done, but we're going to get it done right once. That's it. So huge thanks to Marcin. Uh, he, and he's helped us out with other things too, just motivating us. So so how is that Oakville job coming? Uh, good. I, I think... In I the was there. You were on the final stage of framing. Final stage of framing. That all got done. Um, spray foam, really good. The guys came in good, G and I, Great Northern. Okay, yeah. Good guys there. We had a really good crew. Um, it just, it kind of, it worked out. I've been hearing a lot of delays in framing this year, and it happened. I know that. Same thing with Concrete. We all know that. But once that was all settled, it just went quick. Everything, and then even our clients saw that, like, okay, it was studs, studs, studs. Then I don't know where they're roughing. And then out of nowhere, insulation. As soon as insulation hit, drywall, tape, flooring got installed, primed. Well, primed before flooring. And then now we're in trim. So um, my hopes are that by... Done, done by Christmas? <laughs> with If our kitchen installer, <laughs> uh, which was not my pick. Um, Why was the delay with the kitchen cabinets? Uh, misinterpretation of my email when it said install date. They misinterpreted uh, yeah. the the person the point of contact misinterpreted it. What was the installed date? So uh, December uh, today. Oh shit! And uh, delivery date is a week today. Oh shit! Oh well, the the trim guy is there because I got him installed the doors first, jams and everything, and then I was like, okay, perfect. By the time he gets to the base and trim, he can just butt up beautifully, nice. That didn't happen. Yeah, and now he has to come back. It happens. It's construction. So Stuart's a really good guy. It's the holidays. Yeah. And there was a big misconception about the mudroom bench. I told them to provide us with raw material so we can spray it on site. My painter. And then he goes to me a couple of days ago, goes, you know what? I didn't get the raw material. I'll just give you a couple hundred bucks. You'll get the material. My guys can install it. I looked at him and I go, um, no. <laughs> so... Take that off your the final bill from my client and the carpenter, which is right there, it's on his knees, putting up little pieces, this and this, will do it for us. So Stuart from Affinity Works not only is going to do a better job, he's going to use a hell of a lot better material because guaranteed I know what they were going to use, MDF. Instead, we're going to get real wood. And it's going to be way better structurally, and he's going to be able to make sure that there's no three-inch fillers on every side because... And I, it's a good thing it happened. I think it's a good thing. Mind you, did it push us back a week because now my stone guy can't come and measure for quartz? Yeah, but at the end of the day, they're going to get that better product, and I think they're actually going to save a little bit of money. How's the client feeling? Upset. Actually knocked on his door last night. Um, that, was, that was a text message I got this morning. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's funny. How'd that feel? Like I didn't do my job almost, but at the same time, with, with a budget, as contractors, we have to work with a budget, and then we have to also work with, okay, well, you know what? If we maybe use this person or this contact, I'll be able to, we'll see what happens. Maybe it's a good thing. We're not going to use our people that we recommend. Maybe it'll work out. 
That was my mentality. And me looking at the budget so early in the job, like framing stages, I was just like, well, what if something slips up? What if something unforeseen happens? Which it did. We had the inspector come in and say, we have to upgrade the water service. One eighth of an inch. $3,200 later. That was never in the scope at all. Why do you have to upgrade the water service? What was coming in already into the structure? Five eighths. Five eighths. But that's on the city side, no? Uh, no, the city. Get this, because that area is being developed. So they're running all new lines. They ran all new lines, three quarter. They okay. ran it. They ran the box three quarter. But on the street, because they know that the development's happening, these houses are going to take inch and a quarter. So they've already upsized the entire street. They're just giving people basic three quarter, which is now in the code book, plumbing code books, three quarter. He goes to me, and he goes, "What's in the code book, Mister Plumber?" Well, and I go, well, "It's." You know, it's three quarter. He goes, what do you have here? I was honest with him because he was my plumbing, my heating, and my insulation. Yeah. So it's five eighths. I said, but we're not adding anything to this house. We're, we actually took away an entire bathroom group. He goes, oh, you just answered my question and your own question is three quarter. Therefore, I want three quarter. Call me. Call me when uh, you're digging. <sighs> so that conversation with the client, I was, my heart was going to come out of my chest. Uh, hang on a sec, though. Are you obligated to go three quarter or is he just pulling his weight? I think he was pulling his weight because I'm a young contract. We are young contractors. So why can't you contest it while you're past that point? I, asked, I told him, I said, listen, we are not doing an addition. We are not upgrading any sprinklers. My clients will never do that. We're not adding a pool or a hot tub. This is what's on the drawing today. And as you can see, we're, we're within the fixture range. He goes, yeah, but you're not on code. Didn't you pull permits for plumbing? You pulled permits for plumbing. Yes, And, you and everything else. Yeah. And in your drawings, it's stated as what? Five eights, right? Yeah. Okay. So you can contest it, but you're past that point now. I'm just talking about like you young guys and then something like this comes along. I th Is this an older guy, a young guy? Older gentleman. Okay. I have a history with him. Back in my plumbing days. Okay. He... I think it was 20 houses. We're doing water service. It was one inch. I was, I was putting them in that day. It was March. I remember. Um, North Oakville, job site. I'm not going to name the builder or anything. A good builder. Um, and then uh, I was hurried up to go get it done, whatever, got it done. He comes in. Goes, everything failed. Upgrade everything in one and a quarter. I call the foreman. Foreman calls the boss. Boss then calls me. And so a week later, came back in. Removed everything, one and a quarter. Because he felt that the houses had too many fixtures. Even though the same thing with our house, the plans were passed under one inch. Yeah, but it, see, you can't use the plans being passed as a reason for not doing it. Correct. Because the city may have overlooked that. Which I believe is what happened in our case. I know, but no, but you're in, in your case, though, if your service that's coming into the house on the house property is five-eighths, Regardless if they're going to upgrade the city side next year or the year after the next five years, it doesn't obligate you to upgrade that line now. No. You continue that line that same size, five-eighths into the structure. Correct. That's what I'm saying is you can contest it. I should have. But you're thinking, well, well how, okay, so here's the question. The money came from where? The client? We, when I initially budgeted for this project, uh, there was obviously negotiations like take this out, take this out, obviously, as, as all budgets go. And then I said, okay, what I have to do is I have to look at who's coming into the house, who's going to do all the rest of the work, and I should build up a contingency fund within that budget. That's what I did. Even before we even put up a sign. So I already knew that there's something that's going to, mm, I didn't think it was going to be that. I thought it was going to be when we demo everything, we're going to see Rod and Joyce. We already sistered a few, but most, most of it was good. So that's where I grabbed a lot of the funds from. It's How much does this cost to increase it to three quarter? Uh, 3,200. A lot of money. That's crazy money. Want to hear something better? Is it better or is it worse? It's, it's going to cost more money. <sighs> what is it now? Hydro. Overhead wires, apparently, they want to send an engineer to check if the overhead wire, I'm not an electrician, I'm going to use very basic terms, 
is okay so we can put in a 200 amp service in the house. Sure it is. They're saying not? They're saying they're going to send their engineer. Oh, that's bullshit. Of course it is. Again, we haven't had to pay. Problem is, I'm waiting on a new panel. We got, we need power soon in the house. Every city, well, here in greater Ontario, just call it, they run that line. Yes. It's all the same. Yeah, I know. Unless you're in some sort of small town Ontario or whatever, maybe that's not the case. But we're talking about Oakville here. Yeah. That line is 200 amp. Yes. So oh. there's no need. It's delays and it's bullshit on their end and justify extra costs. Yeah. Which they'll build the client, but hopefully it's not going to get s- at, at you, right? You can't absorb that. We shouldn't absorb it. No. Because it never was... It's like uh, when the electrician told me, he goes, oh, I'm still waiting on if they're going to send the, when they're going to send the engineer. Key question when? What do you mean when? I'm in trim. Now you're in the mercy of them now. Yeah. I'm in trim. Like, uh, that means I can't get my panel. That means I can't give them back their basement. Like, I'm not finishing the basement. How are you running? You're running on uh, temp power right now? Running on temp power. He has two boxes. He put at the panel that's still running, but we're running extension cords to the second floor. Just to do work. And you're at Trim? We're at Trim. So what is Oakville Hydro doing now? They sent an email last week to myself and the client. Oh, yeah, we're uh, investigating this. And re- who's Sparky? Who are you working with again? Uh, at Pritchard Electric, Rob. Rob. Why can't Rob... Contest it? Yeah. He's trying. Speak to an ESA agent or something. Uh, we're going like. to have to. Something's going to have to give. Simon, are you listening, Simon? Yeah, what the <laughs> hell is this shit? I know you're in Toronto. <laughs> Well, what is all this shit about? Because I'm pretty sure that they do not have to pay any extra, but it's all bullshit, right? If they want to, go ahead. The client goes, rip up the line, and we don't care. Just I know, but I'm just like, Greg, you, I'm just trying to figure uh, out, okay, fine. You're, you're making, let's say, whatever, for argument's sake, you're making 100 grand profit. You're down already 3,200 mm-hmm. profit. Yeah. It wasn't a contingency. Any contingency that you've padded on your budget is coming out of your profit now. That that basically became your profit. Yeah. So now you've 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 you absorbed the thirty two hundred for the plumbing, which could have been contested. Yeah. It, it could have caused some delays or some shit like that and whatever. But I would have contested it because I've been enjoying that lately. <laughs> but I mean, it's just like not everybody's perfect. Doesn't matter if you're old or new or experienced or whatever. There are certain rules that you have to abide by, and I totally agree. Like sure, and once you have the drawings, they're issued from the city, and it says it on the drawing. But you can still contest it. The same way that they can look at it and go, no, 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 since you're building it, you're responsible for it. And all of a sudden, great, fine. That source coming in is five eighths. Yeah. So we both visually inspected that it's five eighths. This is five eighths. Don't be expecting me to change all this because the city is going to potentially plan on changing this later on. It doesn't work that way. So I would I would have contested that. I would now your profit would have still been a hundred grand. So yeah. I'm just I'm hoping that you're not getting more of these little bites into these the things. profit. Yeah. No, this is the last one. We're we're at the we basically know all the costs now. Okay. Now it's just kind of just oh maybe we'll pick this finish this finish and it's totally fine because there's still you know there's room and we we saved on A and then we'll take that savings and we'll put it on B, which which is I think is a good idea. Yeah. I think it's also it lets the client know that we're working on their behalf as well. As long as it doesn't eat away at a, a, the contractor. No, but profit. there's also some parts of this that it's a conversation with the client and it's their dwelling. They yeah. own it. That's their neighborhood. And if there's all these upgrades that are going on or bullshit delays that are as a result of infrastructure being changed, they should be looped in and they should be aware that some of this cost is going to have to come out of them. I think uh, when they went to apply for the permit, I think at that time, the city town whatever should have said something hey oh they won't but well they're all wearing those really dark terminator glasses with the side things on it right they're blind to all fucking common sense right Right? that's the thing about it it's kind of like uh what we're going to talk about later very similar just saying so it's almost finished it's getting to the end yeah and and um we're we're definitely we're learning we've learned a lot of course you always do oh every house is a double it's brick plus cylinder cinder block construction that was like the whole even the main floor everything six inch block or four, six, six inch block inch. six inch with a four inch veneer brick yeah wow i know that's a bunker and then we framed everything tight and then you framed and also frame for insulation for insulation lost wow. 11 inches 
side to side, you know, yeah, uh, five and, and a half. They, all the way they have actually got a better house now. Oh, like we have a heater because we don't want to turn on the furnace. Yeah. You can put it on pilot. The next day a house is like, yeah, hotter that's what than I mean. They've got a better house. Oh yeah. Yeah. What else? That's it for the house. But then I know you sent me a text saying that it was a shit show the last few days or last few uh, days, earlier yeah, this that, week. That with the, with the windows. And then the I kitchen. don't even know about that. Okay. On the kitchen. What happened with the windows? Well, I showed up this morning to their office and just conveniently the two points of contact were not around. They were not in the office. I don't know where, I don't know. (laughs) The accounting were there. Accounting was there. Okay. Um, The community, you know, everyone makes mistakes. That's fine. We do too. The point of communication was brutal. Um, we were always, we, we, we gave their deposits whenever they wanted. Everything was good. We had the rep come out a few times to make sure everything's measured. I had a bunch of different questions. Seemed like everything was going to get resolved. It was supposed to be 16 to 20 weeks. Holy cow. I ain't the first guy to, apparently that was normal. Then it became 22 weeks. At what point in the 16 to 20 weeks did it become 22 weeks? Uh, Halfway through? When we were done demo. So they said, oh, it's going to get delayed to now, end of September. Reason why? Uh, apparently, the manufacturing process is being delayed. Apparently, glass was hard to get. Glass. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fair. Then? Okay, now it's going to be end of October. So that's How many like, weeks 28 now? weeks. 28 weeks. 22 and 26. You're halfway through the year. Yeah, right. More. Okay. Then I get a message. Uh, it's another two weeks. So 28 weeks. Total. Total. From when order date. When was we ordered order? in April. Oh, man. We ordered before. We ordered. Will they go in before the holidays? Oh, they're in. Oh, they're in now. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, they're in. One of them has got to come out because it's got to crack. And it's an inch and a half too small. And but no one noticed that until you go on the inside because caulking and flashing is like really good. They did a decent job, so that was nice. So I've been down this road before, and I guess the question to ask you is: Would you use them ever again? Absolutely oh. not. <laughs> That's what I thought. Nope. Are you kidding me? That's what I thought. How much? Like, do they give a shit now? Absolutely not. Which is such a shame. You know what? Uh, we learned. You know who's you know who's really getting the the the. The back end of on this, it's the client because they got to live in the house with those bloody windows. Of course. Don't get me wrong. Nice triple pane. I got exactly what I ordered. These are triple pane? Oh, yeah. All of them? Oh, yeah. Holy cow. Uh, that ain't cheap there. No, it was. A, I'm not going to say the exact amount, but we're looking at north of 30. It's expensive. I know. Energy efficient is all. That's the one thing that my clients were very happy with us. We, we cared about their energy efficiency because the Greener Homes Act. That was good that they're going to, you know, they're going to submit. Oh, yeah. We've already, we just have to submit the final uh, energy star uh, blower test. Okay. And I know that's going to be sealed because please, we put in over five inches of insulation everywhere. Everywhere. So there's no way. And I sealed everything, uh, spray foam and I've uh, hydraulics and everywhere. The whole thing sealed. Yeah. So, um, but did, did all of that affect your profit line? Not yet. No? Nope. Not yet. We, well, we don't... Not, not to, well, you guys are calculating everything, so you guys are... Well, time-wise, it, time it really sucked. It's extended it. It's, it kind of, because now there's supposed to be basement drywall reveal. Because okay. the clients aren't going to finish their basement just yet, and that's fine. Drywall reveal is kind of all right in basements. I, I don't mind it. So now the problem is, my drywaller goes, okay, so do we wait? I'm like, no. I don't, I don't care. Don't wait. Just do the drywall to the framing, cut it all out, and then we'll, we'll do it later. The drywall reveal? Yeah, because they left us with the channel, right? So I know, but that's going to be a pain in the ass. I know. Well, no, so What if they're a little bit off? I know it's all off. Like, I know I know the drywall, I'm starting to see it now. Even the drywall reveal, like, it's like. What are you guys using, D200? I think that's what it's going to be. Oh, uh, no, D, what did Clever say? D200, D3, something like that. D3, D200. I, so thought, I think you're right on that. I think D200 is just a one. That's it. Yeah, I think so. Right? Yeah. Well, actually, no. The drywall is going to just slip into the window. They left us with the channel. 
Okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so they did. But that's and they, risky, man. That, then you're going to be holding the bag to try to fix all the finesse in. Not with the email that I sent them about two weeks ago. Okay. I haven't heard a response back. Meaning, the up chart, the, the charge of the couple of thousand that I need, to now for my time or my drywall to come back and do it, whoever it does, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now we got to have the drywall. Now, then we have to... Uh, corner B tape mod. It's already primed. So we all know what's going to happen once it's already primed. It's going to see little bubbles everywhere. Yeah. Good luck. Right. So yeah. it's now on who? It's on us. Again. That's what I mean. So I go back to your budget and profit, and you guys are calculating everything, making sure that this is all. It's all kosher. You, you don't want to be going back to that house over and over to fix little things here and there because all these little things that were done out of sequence yeah. because things weren't properly done in sequence it's going to start to cost you your bottom line right that's Wait, what i'm trying to avoid oh well, at all costs we're trying to avoid is that as well at the end yeah. of the day we have but sometimes I, I just couldn't afford to lose any more time right because i had people scheduled and this and this and we got so close to the holidays right so we're going to keep trying to uh i don't want to say attack but attack and uh see if we can come up with some sort of a, a number that's going to make sure that they understand that next time communicate or say, you know what? No, listen, we have, we're so backed up. There's problems in the factories. It's just, you know what? We recommend maybe finding another vendor. I think the first clue would have been them extending the 22 yeah. or yeah. whatever it was. After but the problem is that they're holding your deposit ransom, right? Bingo. That's the problem. And so they can do whatever they fucking want. Which but was what I, I have a problem with. And they don't care because they know that you're never going to use them ever again. They know it's a one-time deal. They don't care. You won't recommend them, all this other stuff. So they don't care. There's certain. There's a lot of window suppliers like that out there. Oh, yeah. A lot of them know oh, yeah. that. So let me share a little bit of construction, history and construction. Ontario construction stats. In 2020, Ontario's construction industry totaled $50.9 billion. That's just Ontario. 2020, $50.9 billion. Wow. Could have bought Twitter. Uh, <laughs> between 2002 and 2017, the Ontario construction industry grew 50%. The residential sector GDP grew by 4.4 in 2020, vastly exceeding the average growth of 1.8 between 2016 and 2019. In 2017, renovation work accounted for 57% of total residential construction in the GTA, a 6% increase in 2016. 2017, there were over 80,000 houses starts, housing starts across Ontario. In 2020, roughly 413,600 people were employed in the Ontario construction industry divided almost evenly between residential and non-residential construction. Due to retirement, Ontario will lose 20% of its workforce in 2027, by 2027. Can I say something? What's that? You mean by like 2023? Lose? <laughs> yeah. 2027. I feel as if we're already... Oh, I agree with you. It's oh, next yeah. year. That I is 87,000 people. 87,000 people of that 413,600. 87,000 are bye-bye by 2027. Only 84,000 new entrants are expected in that same time frame. So by 2027, the average age of an Ontario construction workforce will be 41. 41. That's not even going to be you guys. No, not yet. By, what, by which date again? 2027. So I'll be 37. Right? So you'll be in, in and around that medium, right? Yeah. But, I mean, we're, we're going to lose 87,000 and only 84,000 are expected to come in. So we're not even replenishing what we're losing. Justin, can you tell Manny how hard it is to get uh, yeah. a job in the high, especially since you do high-rise ducting? Try to, uh, just tell Manny how hard it is to get a job right now th through the union, especially. Well, just to get into the union, just to get into the union is almost uh, pretty impossible nowadays. Why? Um, I've recommended friends whole bunch of people to uh sign up to the union do the orientation go through the whole um two-week course that they do and uh after the two-week course they still have to do an interview and more than half the time they won't even call you back they just 
won't accept anybody. What are these? Like, really? Why won't they? Um, this is the union? This is the union. So they on purposely creating a, a supply issue? So from last year, what I heard, um, we only had in my union two, um, two orientations in one year. And 150 men have um, signed up, did the orientation. Only 40 went uh, further, did the two-week course. And maybe 20 actually got jobs. Fucking disgusting, man. Yep. And that's one union. But yet all the government money is going to the unions. Which is why I left the union that I was at. I, I, I saw it happen. Like you see, and you see it on site too. Like, and, and it's like they almost, it's, it's just this weird, like, hush, hush. You, you, you're happy with what the union and the government's telling you. Because they, 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 they're, they're just programmed. This is my view. They're just programmed to kind of just do your six to two thirty. That's just, it. That's it. Uh, put up. I was a plumber, so put up a cast. Put up do. Do the words, bro. Or put up the tubs. Okay, cool. You're done here. Go home. Rest. So you can come and push more tomorrow. But don't think outside the box. Don't do it. That's the way it is. That has, that's how it is, right? That's how it is. And the other problem is also we get these new kids, obviously, 18 years old, maybe in mid-20s, whatever, just starting their new career. Um, they come into these job sites, and a big issue are these foremans. And they treat these new guys, young kids, like absolute crap. I see it every single day. Kids are just walking out of jobs, throwing their hard hats away, saying, I'm done. I'm done. What are they doing? Yelling at them? Cursing at them? Belittling Yelling, them? Throwing stuff, throwing at, stuff them, at them? Harassment, abuse. So what's the union not? Like, why isn't the union still? Why isn't the person who's uh, taking all this brunt? contacting the union going this why aren't they videotaping them on their phones or are they going to get fucking shafted is that what's going to happen like i mean if they try to squeal they're scared How, i i had a one bad foreman and when i went to high-rise plumbing and i said a couple of things to the different guys and the different guys were going ah oh, you know it's it's our foreman you know don't just you know uh, lay low don't worry about it like just do your job you'll be fine like you'll most likely be going to a different job site as this well you'll go to a different job site it'll change i'm going yeah but i'm here today what do you mean it's going to change? You think I got to take up, like, so then you see a lot of guys miserable. All, residential is no different. Maybe we're talking high rise. Yeah. Residential is the same. The only thing residential is when you get left in a house as a plumber, usually you're alone to do a finishing or whatever. So you, you know, I turn on your headset, your music, whatever, and you kind of space out until you got to go back either with the foreman in the van or back to the shop. Even then, you're probably so tired at the end of the day, you're like one year in and nothing, it doesn't yeah. matter. But if, High rise and commercial is different because they do loops. It's like a, it's like a yeah. You it's the same week over and over. Oh yeah, and you're on a you floor. To, yeah, you get until you get to the top, right? And then you're done. And then you're done. Well, man, yeah, I don't know. well, he know you're still in it, Justin. Uh, I'm uh, still in that's it. That's why I you're see, there. He's I still part time with you every, every single day. day. What it's, union are you with? Uh, don't want to say. Oh, yeah, <laughs> 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 They'll find you. Don't yeah. worry. <laughs> no, no, I get it. I understand it, man. It sucks because I, I just don't like that they're getting all the support from the government. There's a lot of money going into oh, trying yeah. to get tradespeople into this industry, but they get all the money and all the support, and then we get nothing. Apparently, there's no journeyman. Really? Nobody wants to be a journeyman. It's not worth the extra hundred bucks take home a week. That's all you're getting? Oh, yeah. That's, that's what it is. What's the point of the union at this point? Like, I don't understand. A foreman has so much more responsibilities, paperwork, phone calls. Sometimes they're actually hands-on on their tools and um, extra 100 bucks a week. And a lot of companies are trying to get their journey persons to be either uh, sometimes, like, in plumbing, it was like you do your rough-in. Yeah. Then you do all, like, uh, the copper water lines, yeah. hate recovery systems, your, your fan coil units. And then you get into the uh, the roughing for the water pipe and the drainage in the actual suite. So there's a couple different like layers. So what you try to do is you try to get the journey people who kind of been there, done that, to be almost like the, the floor manager of that 
particular thing. So some people go, okay, it's kind of great, but at the end of the day, well, you're not a foreman. You're just, you still have to say something to the actual foreman. And it's good that, you know, we all have to work together, but then they get the heat at the end of the day. I don't know if it's like that uh, where you go, but. Yes and no. Yeah. So what's it going to take to change this then? Are Stop you going to have to wait uh, until all the old grumpy guys to get off and out? Of. Yeah, but then that, then that's going to make the new generation grumpy and not want to do it, not want to do it right. And here we are trying to do things Because they right. won't be able to do it right because they don't have a workforce for it because the workforce has been shouted out. So then how are we going to build 1.5 million houses? I don't know. Fucking or know. units or whatever you want to call know. it. I don't know. You, you got a lot to talk about here. I mean, what do you want to talk about social media? We'll get to Bill Silly yeah, 23 yeah, yeah. eventually. Silly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, basically Billy Silly uh, 23. Uh, social media, what do you want to talk about social well, media? Well, let's talk about um, what you've achieved first because we're going to talk about us. But like... Um, Making friends? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I t today I saw, we signed a contract today with a client. I said, oh, I, you know, I got things to do. Uh, I'm going on a podcast. Oh, about what? So oh, we're going to talk about the good, the bad, about construction and this and this. And uh, people are genuinely interested, even clients and homeowners. I know clients so it's a are good listening thing. to this show. Oh, yeah. That's why I always dig at them. <laughs> some, some of them are worried. Like, oh, no, no, don't I talk about it. I tell them the truth is what I tell them, right? Well, like have hire a professional. Oh, yeah. Enough with this DIY crap. You want to do DIY? Then go ahead and do it. But don't compare your DIY price to a professional price. Underground economy. Yeah, the well, underground economy, which you also want to talk about as well, too. Yeah, and but social media. Um, what do you think that your podcast now going on YouTube? Obviously, congratulations. Thanks, man. Do you uh, what do you how's it going to go forward now? What do you think is going to come out of this? Doing the podcast? Yeah. What do you, what do you anticipate is going to come out as you go forward with this? I think just continuing sharing the realistic perspective of the industry. Right. That's all through words, through actions. We're not on the job site. If I could do this podcast on the job site, but I mean, I'm sure the ministry of labor would shut us down. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't showed up once. Knock on wood. I'm just saying, right. <laughs> Plus we'd have to wear hard hats with our headsets. And right. All this other oh, shit. and boots and all, vests. See, exactly. Right. right? And Safety I just, I don't want to want to do Safety that. Glasses. Safety glasses. Safety, all kinds of crap. Right. And you yeah. You couldn't put a ladder on the day, like all kinds of stuff. But yeah, I think that it, it, it's just going to continue every day. Someone reaches out to me and just tells me that it's refreshing to hear the show because there's no sugar coating the realistic perception of the industry. That's all it is. And it's relatable because I think construction is its own language, so that it travels through countries. So other people in other countries that are in construction can relate to what we're discussing right now. We don't have the specifics about what we were talking about regarding your, your plumbing problem in 5 base, whatever. They might have a different problem in England or whatever it is. Yeah. I don't know. Could be but a venting problem. Could be anything like that. But you still have a client. You still have tradespeople. You still have a foreperson. You still have uh, inspectors. You still have governing bodies that are overlooking. You have the government wasting money and trying to get more people. I think pretty sure every country is trying to bring more labor into the construction industry. I think so. Because that's what builds countries. doesn't matter what decade, what generation. It's the construction force that builds the country. The infrastructure, the hospitals. Yes, all that stuff. We all need that. We need these homes. We need these. Uh, you, you park a hospital. You park... Unfortunately, at Costco, and you know what I mean? You set up all this thing, and, and, and then that's the epicenter for that community, and then that's who's building all that. Exactly, right? So it, that workforce is getting smaller, as we talked about in history of construction here. So I think that someone can listen to this and get a realistic. I mean, I, I've been fortunate enough to have, I think, pretty much every tradesperson kind of person on the show and give out different perspectives of their trade. So I've had different perspectives of electricians sharing, plumbing sharing, trim sharing, everybody sharing, but at least anybody who's listening, they can listen to it and go, I want to get into plumbing because I've heard of the good, bad and ugly and yep. every other trade. So that's what I think the show is doing. Does that make sense? Fair. So I, th I think it's definitely a plus for a young person if they want to listen to it. Oh yeah. They'll get an idea, right? And they may even, we might even, convince them to not go into a certain trade because of certain reasons but in all fairness the hard trades that i call concrete foundation demo excavation uh all that roofing oh yeah there's you know guys that are on the show that speak passionately about it yeah that's what they do and then you might have someone listening to it go, you know what i'm gonna get into roofing you know what i'm gonna get into concrete i'll call up so and so yeah I'll reach out and chat with them. And I, I love what you had to say because you were passionate about it. And I, I definitely want to get on your crew, whatever. I, I definitely think that the government would be smart to actually start their own podcast. 
about construction. But could you imagine that? Every two seconds would be, it's brought to you by this guy who I'm currently kissing his ass. That's what that show would be all about, right? 20 second ad. And this is how we hid this money. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's how that works. And this is all getting filtered. So it's, it wouldn't be a realistic perception of the industry. Imagine. Uh, it's too entertaining. It'd be too entertaining. Wow. Well, <laughs> imagine, imagine the, they tried. They found a way to hide the twenty-eight billion dollars in the last two years. I know what they call it, redacted. Oh, right. <laughs> it was just like that term, uh, transitory, when yeah. it talked about the inflation. Oh, it's transitory. That's the same idea. Oh so crap, man! Yeah. What else about social media? Uh, help our businesses. It's of course. Oh yeah, of course it's it helped does. ours. Yeah, especially I totally. since we decided since we decided to go up basically every day and say something. Yeah, it's, totally. It, it's so funny how it works. Like, don't get me wrong. It's hard. It's, it's a different aspect of our business. We have to be on it. Uh, but I think maybe the word have to, we also want to show what, why we're in, in the business and how passionate we are, how we're different. I know clients are, they're surfing the web. They're surfing social media. They're mm -hmm. looking for their contractors, but you're also, I'm also seeing an uptick of clients not wanting their projects featured on social media. Oh, is that right? Oh yeah. I mean, if it was me personally, no, nah, I'm not showing you any pictures of where I live or what I'm doing or what my house is going to look like. I want that privacy. And I think a lot more clients want that. They like the idea, which is kind of a twofold, right? Like they like the idea of going to Pinterest and house and stealing all these ideas of other houses that have been photographed, but there's no real name or person associated with that. But then now they don't want theirs featured because it's a community here. Whether it's a digital community, you're still, someone can recognize somebody's house if you built it in Oakville. I bet you in money that you'll eventually, someone might recognize it because of the work that you've done. Yeah. So some homeowners wouldn't want that, especially today. We all want to be secretive and security. So I'm seeing definitely an uptick of clients saying, nope, you ain't featuring my house. And okay. you're going to have to accept it. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, um, we'll, we'll obviously have to say, you know what? We would like to document it as the process goes and we have to share some photos with you. Um, but if I, they don't want it to go on Instagram or Facebook or uh, YouTube, uh, Hey, cool. The trade off is going to be, you're going to, because I mean, it's, it's interesting that a lot of trades people were putting clauses in their contracts where they can use. Oh, I do. Right. And, and I've done it too as well, but now they're amending that to the point where you can document it and use it to solicit more work uh, to, in person but not on social media. Okay. Right? Fair. So they just don't want it because it's, such, it's so saturated, right? Yeah. I mean, like, I, I, you got to look at the client's perspective. Like, we need that stuff to kind of build our business, but we also have other tools to use to build our business. So you got to be prepared. I'm just saying to anybody who's doing a lot on social media and expecting that golden goose of opportunity, photos, and all this other shit, yeah. it might be, dis like, it just might disappear one day because the client will say, I do not want anything in my house featured. Yeah, I don't want people knowing the plumbing fixture I chose or all kinds of stuff like that. Hopefully by then, uh, all of us are going to be prepared um, and have maybe even say, even before that happens, you know what, we're, we're, we're done. We're done with social media, whatever. We'll see. It, things change, right? Like, it totally does. Negative. Yeah. You're saying negative aspects of social media. Well, that could that could be negative. We could twist that and be like, well, now our business thrives on... Uh, us being personalities, us recognizing uh, Manny, us recognizing Justin, us recognizing the other builders. It's, it's I look at it this way. You got to decide. Yeah. You either want to be a social media influencer or you want to be a contractor. If you want to try to do both, you can, but one will overtake the other. Yeah. Whether you let it or not, one will overtake the other. Don't expect to do both because one will prior towards the other one. Oh, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It's like you can't. I know a lot of guys are getting on social media and they want that personality because they want to try to become an influencer and they want to attract brands to sell tools and all this other crap and whatever. And they're trying to do that. Right. Fine. But then now you're an influencer. You're not a contractor anymore. Yeah. Right. So as long as you're fine with that, then fine. Great. Yeah. That that I think would be the negative side of anything. Yeah. So you have to decide what you want to do that. That's true. Maybe too much social media is not a good thing either. Maybe it makes you feel low. Oh, they've yourself. done studies, man. Like You know that for a fact. That oh, yeah. too much social media is garbage for your brain. Yeah. It just makes you kind of be like, oh, I'm not at that level. I should be there. I go through it. 
Mentorship, having good people in your construction family and life. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, the shout outs. That's why I shout totally. out. Totally. I do um, shout outs every time on the show. Yeah. And it's just having like minded people around you. Like mentorship, many of you come on our website. And thank you so much. You obviously, you've done this for yeah. uh, us and, and so many other uh, construction companies. I'll pass by anybody's site if it's in relatively neat shape. No, not neat shape. Close. I was thinking about travel time. <laughs> I'm like, don't be. Jared, don't call me if you're in Winnipeg. I'm not fucking driving up to Winnipeg <laughs> to go see your site, man. Send me pictures or do a Zoom call or FaceTime me, and I'll do that, right? But yeah. then I'll pass by for sure. Um, and, and if other subcontractors or, or your own uh, employees are proud to work for you, that helps you as a brand as well, and that brings awareness probably more than social media. It does. Yeah. And they're excited about it? They're excited to even wear your, your company clothes. Yeah. I picked up an order yesterday. Most of it is for our, our traits yeah. and just like guys who be like, you know what? I want to wear it on a, on a Saturday when I go grocery shopping. <laughs> yeah. 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 Chris. Yeah. 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 Good. Uh, one of our good friends who helps us. <laughs> I remember I haven't given out a t-shirt in a long time, but I mean, remember in the earlier days I gave out like over a thousand t-shirts and I'm trying to remember his name. Court, uh, Courtland, Courtland 6066 or something like that. I think that's his handle. Uh, down to earth guy, really cool guy. He sent me a message and he was like smoking a bong with my t-shirt on. Right. <laughs> and I was like, are you cool with this man? He was going, of course, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Posted it. I'm like, cool. I'll retag it. I'll repost it. And then get it. Hey, out. he's on his own. Yeah. He's hanging out. He's not committing a crime. No. Nope. Wait a minute. No, he's not committing a crime. <laughs> 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 I'm just trying to think of when it was actually. Doing. No, no. And I was like, I didn't have a problem with that. No. Like you're wearing my tea, you're proud of my tea, and you're smoking a bong. I don't give a shit. Right? Yeah, it's fine. Go for it. Didn't offend me. No. Oh, uh, I. The more people wear our brand, I'm yeah. Like, oh, go for it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's gonna cost me a couple of bucks today, but okay. So businesses should be doing that. I think they should. Um, I think, uh, and we all know there's a cost associated with that, and it's not cheap. It's not cheap, man. No. No, but you know what? Ninety percent of the time, I this is what I wear. Wear it to the girlfriend's house. I'll wear it here. I'll wear it there. Went to the driving range with it. I had and everything. It's just, it's, it's kind of becomes part of you. If you're proud or if you're not that guy who wants to show off your brand, you just want to do your work. That's cool too. But at least maybe the GC that's coming up or that you do work for, maybe support him if you want. Yep. So it kind of works. Yep. We're happy to give, you know, some stuff. Uh, keeping a tight ship on site and keeping communication open between all trades that creates a family approach with the goals. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're building a network, man. I had, we, our meetings were with the framer plumber was there. Um, electrician was there within when they just did the basement framing. I said, okay, we all need to talk. I don't want anyone cutting out their stuff. Let's, let's like, you guys know who you are now. We've been to different sites together. Like this is where you can, this is, where your wire is going up against his stud. This is what it is. Tell him what he needs. I don't want to hear it. No problems. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have a problem with somebody, well, you hash it out now. Like, <laughs> I don't need to be someone's babysitter. You know, like. And Are you doing that, though? Are you sitting on your list of A-team and going, will he or she get along with he or she? They have no choice. No, but are you even yes. thinking about that, yes. right? Because if there's going to be some resistance, what's the point of actually adding to that, right? You have to think about it. Yeah. And you have to think about also, uh, I just, I guess it's a personality thing. I think all there's, everyone's good people. I try it always. I think it's just maybe a personality clash. Maybe that person doesn't get scheduled to do this until this person's done. Or if they just so happen to be in the same spot or whatever, Hopefully they settle it like people, civil. You would like to think so. Greg, I want to ask you, um, age group-wise, your team, what's the range? Uh, well, just what's the youngest? What's the oldest? Shoot. Who's the youngest? Who's the oldest? I'd say everyone's like 25 and up. 25 and up. 25 and up. How far up? Uh, I think our tile guy is mid mid thirties or pushing his forties. So they're all within a yeah, yeah. decade I, or so. It w yeah. Basically from 25 all the way up to like 40. So 15 years. So about 15 years. Yeah. So you guys are all from the similar generation, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
But that's just by who you've met through your network. Correct. You haven't met any much older people? Oh, I have. Okay. But have they worked with you on your site? Not on my sites personally. I've worked with them on different sites. Okay. Um, and a lot of it's also generational too. Yeah. It's like uh, our electrician's father. We met the father first and then we met Rob. So we worked with the father, 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 and then the father goes, you know what? I kind of want to slow down a little bit. Uh, you know my son, and it just it's transitioned, right? So that's kind of cool. It's kind of cool, yeah. But as the guys get older, you got to still look for other guys as well. Yeah. Well, which is why we also kind of were like, okay, well, we have to pick people that with our – I think it's also a mindset thing too. Yeah, for sure. I think maybe that's why we gravitate towards maybe that uh, generation of people. Um, but do you feel that you're losing out on the older generation, not having them on the job site? Uh, it's a good question. Really. No, you don't think so, Justin? Are there a lot so. of older guys on the union? There, yes. So I'm assuming yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. I've, uh, just a couple of days ago, met a plumber, 74 years old union. Union. On the site. On the site. High rise. High rise. Okay. Walking upstairs all the way up to a slab just before slab. Steam fitting. Steam fitting and yeah. All that stuff. Seventy four years old. Is anybody speaking to him and asking him how it was back in the day? Or does he just stay to himself? I think he's to himself. Just him and his son. That's it. That's it. So he's teaching his son. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out. I mean, you asked about the podcast, but that's what I, I, that's the one thing that I'm conscious about is trying to get us old guys on the show as much as possible because they don't want to share it on the site, but they'll share it here. So someone can listen to, you know, 90 minutes of someone that's been through quite a bit. I think you should. No, no, I, I focus. I have a lot of, there's uh, yeah. Andrew, Andrew Prete brought Gabriel, who's his mentor, and that show's going to drop soon. And, uh, and that was a great show. And that was Gabriel talking about, you know, trim carpentry back in the 80s. You know, we, we're having lots of fun about quarter round. You know what I mean? And we're just like, and we prefab, you know, like doors and everything like that and all that crap. And and then you're, you know, Andrew's in his uh, early 30s and he was learn he was taught by him, right? So it's just, it was nice to see that. I think that's, uh, that's a mandate of this show. Yeah. Try to get as many old guys on the show before they're under their show. You know what I mean? So, right. uh, because they have a lot of knowledge that they want to share. They do. I think you just have to ask it a certain way. Yeah. They don't want to do it on the job site. No, no, no. They, they. I think if you approach that guy, I think he'd be f pissed if you like. Why are you bothering me? I got, I got this many things to do. Now I'm gonna take longer. I'm supposed to get home, and I'm supposed to have an espresso. I'm supposed to do this. Pretty right? much, yeah. Right? So you don't want to bother him at that point. But if you get a day that he's not on the site, then you can pick his brain. How well is it? You know. Yeah, I think it's a lot of the older generation. Yeah. But it's your generation now, that core that you've got 20, what was it, 25 to 40? Yeah. You know, 10 years is not that far off, man. 40 is going to be 50, right? So it's like, it's going to happen soon, fast. Yeah. But you guys were hoping that you get as, as much knowledge as possible before you get to that point where you can start handing it off and back and forth over and over, right? Yeah, we have to. It's a lot of work to do, man. It's every day. Being a, a GC or a tradesman, it's every day it consumes a lot of your... Your thought process. You think differently, I think. You see things differently. And you're going, okay, well, it's going to work today, but make sure we have to make it work for tomorrow. So how to get to tomorrow? I'm curious. How are you doing the paperwork on this current job, the Oakville job? Or are you just doing an Excel sheet or something? Yeah, That's Excel it, right? So you haven't dove into the whole getting a, some sort of software and then breaking it down and all that kind of crap. Like a CRM? I don't know, something. Yeah, so we looked into Builder Trend earlier in the year. Builder Trend doesn't work for what you and I and, and smaller people do. It doesn't. I'm sorry. No, but, you have to have a few jobs yeah. going. Uh, also, price-wise is significant. Yeah. it doesn't. Big. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't work. If you're building a lot each year, sure, it makes sense. But not yeah. if you're a one-off, two-off per year. Mm -mm. No, it doesn't make sense. It's not worth it, right? No. But there's other programs. I mean, guys have mentioned other programs on the show, uh, too. I know House makes a pro platform. House? House, yeah. Really? Yeah, they make a pro platform. For what? For like running your business? Yep. And estimating. Uh, design too. Really? Yep. Don't uh, get me wrong. I, I have to look into specifics. I'm back to the red flag again, man, with a house, man. I don't know about that. Oh. I'm I question that one. Yeah, well, um, there's like uh, 
other one? There's a few. I know uh, I would have to look into, uh, there's a construction show that just happened last week. Um, what do you mean? Constru- yeah, it was Construct Canada. Yeah, the Constru- building show. Yeah, yeah, the building show. Yeah, we. I would have to probably look at the vendor list. Okay, and I'm pretty sure we can find at least three, some sort of software. I just, I think it makes sense for you to start thinking about how you can be more efficient with your time because, like you just said, there isn't. There's so much going on for GC. Uh, my focus for 2023. And I know we're probably going to get into the whole recession talk, even if that were to happen. Well, we're in one, but um, that's going to be there. We just talked about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) No, no, no. we're uh, that's going to be my focus is uh, definitely getting into the CRM, having a database of clients, having a database of uh, vendors or trades, whether it be Excel, whether it be on some CRM, some Excel stuff, um, just getting everything just ready. Because us running around, like, with just going like this. Oh, my God. what? Uh, it works. doesn't work. But it's not for a while. Not tomorrow. Today. Not tomorrow. Doesn't it's tough, work. though, because, we're you know, you're learning so much every day. And you're trying to figure out how to implement it better. So I think we just have to kind of sit down. So a little bit of a slow period is going to suck. But um, at least it's going to get us ready when things pop again. But, yeah, take that time. Take that time. To make it better. Yep. Little OBC talk, gentlemen. Combustion air in fireplaces built on site. Okay. All solid fuel fireplaces, fired fireplaces, must have a supply of combustion air from outdoors supplied by a 100 millimeter, 3 and 7 eighths diameter, non combustible and corrosive resistant supply duct. The duct must have a tight fitting damper close to the interior outlet operable from the room containing the fireplace the operating mechanism must clearly indicate the actual position of the damper the interior outlet must be a close as possible to the opening in the face of the fireplace and be designed to prevent embers from entering this is obc man i don't know this is justin you hear justin hears dampers and he lights up like a christmas tree (laughs) (laughs) i hate fire dampers (laughs) why it's a pain to install and just work on sometimes the because obviously once the, the clip gets too hot it just snaps and the door just shuts close like that's how it is for high rise really that's how it is for high rise so once it reaches i can't remember of what temperature it is but that's how it prevents all the smoke running through the buildings uh you're closing off each section. Yeah. They're basically a fire door for HVAC system. Oh, yeah. And basically almost every single wall you put your duct through, fire damper, fire damper, Are you fire you kidding damper. me? It's ridiculous. I could never do a high rise, huh? I, I thought I could, and then I was like, ciao. See ya. <laughs> year and a half later. How long did you do it for? Uh, a year and a half. That's it, huh? And then that's when I, that's when I told uh, my boss at the time, I need two months off and going through some stuff. And at the time... I thought it was going to be two months. And then uh, go back. Actually, I should probably call my old foreman. He was actually a great guy. Talking about foremans, he, he, this, the second and third one I was with, fantastic. Peace beyond the construction life. What happens beyond the job site needs to be in order. If not, it can be re- derailed your goals and plans. Yeah, at home. Dude, this whole year on the show, all I've ever talking about, man, is like construction life is important. Your personal life, far more important. Way more important. Far more important. Oh, yeah. Way beyond. Yeah. You got the construction life. You've got the skills. Run your business a little better. Try to figure out. Speak out to other people. Try to streamline your business. Try to run it better. Hire somebody else. Partner with somebody else. Yep. Focus on all that shit. Do not ignore your loved ones. Oh, Focus on no. your loved ones and what's going on and fix that. Work that. Be with that. Spend time. Find time. I, I feel as if... Uh a lot of guys don't talk about how they're burnt out. They talk about working till midnight, till Cause, two. Because it's a manly position. It's not. I did it uh, last week. I I, I did the I did a, from it was like seven in the morning to like the midnight or something. And you know what? Uh, it's funny. The girlfriend came. She can help me out just to clean everything. And then we had a party on the Saturday. I came in. Everything's decorated nicely, and she did a beautiful, amazing job. And then I came in. I'm like, I'm just so frustrated. I just got this. I got all this like food and drinks in the truck. I'm like, Let me just bring it in. Let me. And like, I couldn't. 
I couldn't tell her how great everything was because you're just you're just so frustrated. And then that's when I realized I'm like, ah, no way, 2023 ain't gonna be like this no more. Oh, it hit me like a brick. That moment, I said, that's it, no more. I'm not going 13 days in a row. Take December off. Uh, Shut it down. You know what I did last Christmas Eve? What? A ceiling tile. The bathroom we just finished. Christmas Eve is 2 o'clock. Pick up the last check, too. I know. I'm never doing that again. On Christmas Eve? Christmas Eve. And Christmas Day, I was at uh, around my aunt's house. And then it was about 6 o'clock. We ate dinner. I was like, passed out. Done. So next December, take that off. And then also in the summertime, take a month off. We're, we're taking a week off in the summer. I was shutting it right down. I don't, yeah. care, what, I don't, I don't care if I'm mid-poor. Shutting it down. <laughs> I don't know if I'm mid, mid poor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I finish the poor yeah, and, the and poor, then, then take off, then take right? Okay. <laughs> Done. All right, you want to chat about Bill C23? Yeah, great. Recent news. The only recent news that I shared on a recent show uh, was uh, one developer who got that loan. I don't know if I told you about that. Whoa. Oh yeah, he he got a loan at the start of the year for a hundred million, bought eighty million dollar worth of land. So it's the twenty million for, and then bought green land, belt land, so you can't build on it. But then Ford allowed it to be built on. Oh, so how he knew. You, how do you get a loan at twenty percent? So he knew. Somebody knew something before. Are you kidding me? There's a lot of insider shit. We also know there's all the crap about the property taxes are all going to go up. Yep. So all this, I mean, you gave me this document, which is great, and it's like this is where all this shit's coming from. And it's just showing all the changes for development charges, community benefit charges, removal of upper tier approval powers, zoning for uh, in MTSAs, uh, like no third party appeals. Which? Uh, like it's just bullshit. Like this is basically this bill that Ford has created is basically a bill to avoid all these top developers to pay the proper fees that would feed the cities to cover all these expenses that the cities need to operate everything. So now he's eliminated that. And now the developers are going to make more money profit wise. And yet the cities are all going to be in deficit and we'll have to raise taxes to everybody who's not benefiting from purchasing this green belt and build in on that. How does that write? And how is that not a conflict? I'm, I'm calling this like the Nancy Pelosi bullshit. Oh yeah. With the insider trading. Yeah, it's all, it's a hundred percent insider bullshit here. Yeah. And there should be accountability on top of it. There never will be. That's why I do, it was a joke to have, I'm sorry, Luca, that be on the show here and him talking about how this is a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's a good thing for a small select group of wealthy people. That's what it's a good thing for. For the majority of us? No. Not no for way. the GC. No way. After five years. No way. It's not. It's not, man. Um, uh, what were you going to, did you highlight anything in specific that you want to no, talk about? No, 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 no. I, I brought the document. Well, there's just so much. Sorry. Um, it's it, like, I, I read through it this week. Like, there's even like crazy. Ontario land tribunal procedures. They're changing. Aggregate resources are changing. Natural changing. Conservation. Like everything that basically made it difficult to build on these areas. Like variants. They got rid of all of that. Yeah. So basically it was like party. Well, it was a party. Just, they just, just throw money yeah. at it. And, and wealthy stick. people that are already wealthy are going to continue to become more wealthy because of this. And then what I have a big problem with, and he hasn't answered this question, is the $240 million tax deficit that has been created by this now. Wait, we haven't started building and we're in a deficit. No, no. So as a result of not obtaining all these fees from all these developers that would have been building on these properties, right. on this land. Okay. Each municipal is going to be in a deficit of tax earnings that was supposed to come in from these fees. How is that right? It's wrong beyond. And and why isn't anybody attacking Ford on that, saying, where do you expect all this tax earning to come from now? You expecting the people who are paying way too much now because of inflation? Paying how much is your diesel? You're not driving diesel. You're driving. Uh, no, um, but diesel has surpassed regular gas here in Ontario now. I, I think. think. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, big time. Yeah. It has. Oh, huge. Yeah. So you're paying more for diesel now. Yeah. Well, uh, well, gas went down. Well, it's a big deal. One thirty-five, one thirty-four average. Big deal. Last week, a container of strawberries was twelve ninety-nine. How much did you buy strawberries for uh, on Saturday? We were together. I think it was like eight nine bucks. Yeah, there you go. Just just. 
little box. Are you kidding me? I picked up a salad kit yesterday. Two boxes of raspberries, two for five. <laughs> <laughs> and I picked Steel. up a, mm-hmm. I know, t- uh, a Greek yogurt. 18, uh, like 97. It's ludicrous, like, it's ludicrous. What? 20 bucks. So so you who are paying all that extra, right? Oh, the three, the thirty two hundred dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then also recently in our government, the you know they tried to s- convince uh, Parliament to get rid of uh, the carbon tax, right? And it was shot down by the NDP Liberal co- Coalition. Oh, it's going to continue to be that way. Oh yeah. Until an election happens on a natural calendar scale. Because you, nobody's got the balls to force an election here to get them out, right? And the, everything needs to change. So I, what's going to happen in your business next year? So you want to talk about the recession next year? Is it going to happen? Isn't it going to happen? Guys are saying, I'm booked for two years. I'm booked for the next year. Booked for two years. I'm booked for two years. Tell me you're booked and tell me you're making profit are two different animals. Oh, yeah. We're, we're booked until May. Construction's been booked forever for the longest time. Yeah. But are you making a profit? When you sit down and, and do all these numbers, are you making a profit? No. Nope. Tell me you're making a profit. I don't think many people can. And then when you start factoring all these numbers, when your property taxes go up next year because of this approval by this government for their friends to be really wealthy, yep. um, is going to affect your bottom line. You're going to turn around, submit a quote. Your quote's going to be higher now. Client's going to say, we can't afford it. Or we're not going to hire you. We're going to find somebody else to hire. Then you lost that job. Now where are you at? What are you going to do? Lower your price? Lower your standards? You can't be the big developer buying some of this land here and and taking advantage of the situation. No. The majority of us are not that way. No. Uh, Where we're going to be? It's it's the whole thing about the underground economy. Are you going to slide into that? Or are you going to keep your head above it and say, no, this is the way it should be? Are you going to... That's a decision. What are you going to do? I've said this before. I strongly believe if you somehow give clients the opportunity to be tax exempt on renovation projects, you will slowly get rid of the underground economy because that's the only advantage that they have. We'll do it for cash, so we're not charging you the tax. Yeah. Their price is less, but if, if the government would give the clients or homeowners a break somehow, credit or whatever it is, yeah. where they don't have to pay the taxes on any kind of construction project in their home, there has to be their dwelling. Yeah. I think you'll push out the underground economy and they'll hire professionals because they'll be doing it a much better job for the almost the same price. So they get a credit at the end for their tax. I don't know how it works, man. I'm not Perhaps that would be a very, and then they would hire a company who has liability insurance, pays their WSIB, uh, has a website. See, that's the increase in cost. So even if it's the cash guy, they don't have all that stuff. No. Right? But they're also using the fact that we don't have to charge you tax or collect tax. Yeah. You know, $100,000 rental, $13,000. I know. I just signed one today. Yeah, that's what it was. And I bet you the 13000 was a sticking point for the clients. Yeah, because we couldn't actually... To be fair with you, that was the price of the designer who we r- really wanted to help this client because um, she would have loved it. The both of them would have worked great together. Yeah. And there you go. Like, not to say that we can't pick up some tile and some foil. Uh, not as good as them, obviously, but we'll, we'll do our best. But that 13 grand or whatever it could have been would have went right in, back into their pocket. The smile on the face would have said it all. So the government's not doing any of this shit. They're not. All they're caring about is just greasing the wheels of the people that are up at the. Well, they're going to tell you that there's when you look at the statistics, which at the beginning of the show you gave, it was all great. Oh, 56 percent or there's this much money spent in rentals. Even I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty good for a second. It could have been like so much money was made, even just in the tax. If you were to even just give that half of it back. I don't know how much more the government could have made. They're not going to do that. Why? For who? It's not going to benefit them. Who was I talking to recently? Was it, was it you? I was talking on text or something like that. I can't remember who I was talking no, to. We about talked a little bit this week. I was talking about, um, oh, was it maybe Simon? And we were actually talking about green incentives. Oh, yeah. And all this other shit. And, and um, 
like there there's all these rules so you triple glaze or whatever and clients can actually apply for this grant or that grant this energy audit or all this other shit and then we started talking about well, how come you just um in each each homeowner's home for the life of your home that you're living there whatever you get to do whatever you want to do if on that street you prove to the government that you've actually reduced your energy consumption at the end of that calendar year you get a tax break that'd be so, great so it's not that you bought triple ping glass not that you uh, got spray foam or not that you did this or bought this membrane or whatever not that you're doing a rental no it doesn't give a shit it's your utility consumption so your gas went down your hydro went down your water went down so now you as a homeowner and your family you're conscious of your waste right if you can prove and if it's if you're the lowest one on your street let's say you get a tax exempt of some sort wouldn't that drive neighbors and everybody else to try to make their house the way they want to do it to reduce these numbers? Wouldn't that make sense? It'd make too much sense. I think the government, you, you take whatever street you're living on, you take that street, you take whatever, 20 houses. The government knows what everybody's paying for their utilities, right? So now you've got a year. You go in and now do you want to add more insulation? do it you want to get a water saving shower heads do it you want to change all your windows do it do whatever you want to do and then hopefully your numbers go down your house is assessed it's an audited and now you submit it with your tax your your actual tax it's part of your accounting now and now you prove to the government and guess what you're the you you've consumed the less the most or the, you consume the least amount of energy on that street guess what you get a ten thousand dollar tax credit now on your taxes wouldn't that be cool that's the coolest thing ever i think I think it would help a lot of people go green. Yes. Greener. 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 But greener for the right reasons because I have a problem with green because oh, me too. it's whoever's lobbying the loudest yeah. gets these bullshit products and we can go back to win with the heat recovery stack bullshit. Oh, don't. I know. Oh, that was all garbage. Oh, man. That was all garbage. But the thing is her brother or whoever the family member was made a killing on that shit financially speaking yep. and it was all garbage and we had to have arguments with inspectors about this shit this is garbage i'm telling you right now that, oh, it's in the code it's in the code i can still say it's garbage and it's not in the code anymore it's garbage it's gone so it's bullshit there were some of these larger homes not one. Oh, i know two i know Are and everyone telling? that was produced he got a kickback and i'm sure win got a kickback and all this other kickback shit i think if you created a program where each homeowner did it on their own. They can choose whatever they want to choose. They have to just prove that they're using less power. You tell the whole family, we're smartening up now. We're not going to be wasteful. We're not going to take 10-hour long hot showers. We're not going to do any of this crap anymore. And then you prove that your energy consumption is less. And you get a huge tax benefit yep. from it. Yeah. Oh, we can save our planet that way simple give back Don't i know that it, spend. it doesn't line the pockets no. of wealthy people in the construction industry that's the problem with that idea but that was i can't remember who i and i totally forget i'm gonna blame my age that's all i'm gonna say because i have a number of conversations I and <laughs> i'll blame it what else you want to well i mean first of all we're not going to hit 1.5 i'm telling you that right now i'll bet no. anybody on that shit 1.5 million homes my parents house years. is being built for three years it's bullshit it's never going to happen and they'll play games and they'll try to use high rise and condos and oh, they'll try to loop to, it in. They'll try to like they'll try to justify, oh, there was four hundred units here. That's four hundred homes now. Yep. They'll try to do all that shit to, to kind of get close to that number. But no. The only shit thing is that Ford won't get reelected because of this crap. It won't be working, right? But he won't care because he already done the damage. When I say damage, is that he'll have his Costanza wallet in the back of his pocket there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's gonna hurt his back, I hope. Oh, uh, maybe not, I hope. I shouldn't say that, but uh back to the whole waste thing what are we going to do with all of those is there going to be an incentive from the government to recycle all the wood that we didn't use in drywall what are you talking about well bill c23 how we're talking about like green energy the whole thing they got rid of all of that uh, why Wait, they plan on building because it streamlines so you're basically going to build homes that are going to fall apart so where's that waste going to go to in five years you there's the conversation and i had a conversation with Stuart. Uh, affinity woodworks he goes yeah that's what what happens with all the tile that's going to pop off because no one used a membrane 
They just use scratch code like they did 30 years ago. That doesn't work. So it won't be any more like 20-year rentals when your kitchen's done. It's going to be five-year rentals. So their mindset is going to be, well, you guys get more work now. No, you no. got a client who spent X amount of money to do a rental once thinking it was going to last 15, 20 years. Now they have to redo it in five years. You think they're going to hire somebody that's really good to do it? No, they're going to hire somebody that's going to be really shit to do it. Well, because they've overextended it on their mortgage from their purchase of their brand new house. Yeah. That still is going to cost so them a million dollars. It's a massive trickle effect. At the, and, and the shitty thing is it starts off with wealthy people making more money. Or guys in suits telling construction guys how to make I've their money. i said that over and over. Less suits making these decisions and more guys wearing, and girls wearing uh, workwear, man. It's actually quite comfortable, the new workwear. Of course it is, man. I think it's very comfortable, man. Just a lot of pockets. Project quotes and expectations. What is fair? What is a fair way to provide estimates, quotes? What details do we leave out? Are samples a good idea? Are samples a good idea? What do you mean by that? Uh, is your van, is your pickup truck or whatever you drive, is it going to be full with tile, quartz, paint samples? No way, man. I know. No way. I know. So what do you do? Send the client to the actual supplier that you deal with. You guys go here. You have a visit with so-and-so and... -so and Go talk. They have all the samples. There. I know. And then you just say, you know what? I've priced you out. Let's just say seven bucks a square for something. You say, this is within our budget. And if anything else, let me know. And we'll put a change order in. You can't carry all that stuff in your vehicle. There's no way. You can't. For I'm, a whole rental, you can't. Uh, it's too much. Uh, or uh, then you got to have some, like a storefront or something. You got to. And then are you a supplier or are you a GC? That's a different thing. I know. And then estimates and everything like that, I think you just got to be, listen, the golden rule is make your estimate exactly what it's going to cost. Yep. And when they gripe about it being too high, there's only one way that that number goes down. You, re you remove scope. You do not magically reduce the number because you want to give them a deal. You remove items to do. Yep. That's it. Uh, it's going to be a stove now and a range. It's a range. It's not a, it's not a wall oven and a cooktop. There's no espresso machine on the side. That's gone. There's no heated floors in the powder room. Like you're removing scope. That's how the number, and you tell them, go through the grocery list, guys. You want the number to go down? Remove scope. And if they don't value that and they're, they're like, oh, well, we got another quote and uh, he's probably about $10,000 less than you, then go. Cool. All right, so ciao enjoy go with them if you feel better with them then go with them say no don't be afraid to say no fair i know i'm happy go lucky here man no no but you know what though <laughs> uh we we are starting to do the same I, I had a job we bid it on it was in toronto and uh i looked at the architecturals like the drawings and i call like it just Slab insulation, this insulation, this, because they were going with um, uh, a, a basement apartment. I looked at all of this. I go, uh, and then the first thing when I read the notes from the city, shoring is the, f don't even demo. That's mandatory. Uh-huh. Yeah. 40 grand. That's I, why I'm mad at Turnkey loves it. The, st the city is stamping every drawing now with shoring. Yeah. He loves it. He's a shoring company. And you know what? Good. Houses are basically safe. sandwiched together. And it's, it's safe, safe for everybody. Yeah. But, but clients are not going to pay for that. They're going to be upset about it. You came on the bill. Well, it came on an estimate. Has to. I know. But then you have to explain it. You have to justify it. Uh, so your neighbor is not going to be safe because you don't want to spend 40 grand on well, a million dollar rental? Now you have to do it, right? You can't start. So... Uh, you concerned about how to manage expectations during the consultation and estimate phase? Yeah. Um, I think you just got to be blunt and, and, and listen, there's always going to be an elephant in the room. Every time. Every time. Just tell them there's an elephant in the room. Let's talk about it. Don't be afraid to talk about it. Because if you wait and not talk about it, it's going to be worse later on. Yeah. You take the Band-Aid off and it's going to really hurt. So you might as well just... Just let's be blunt about it. Be very, very blunt about it. So if this is our budget, this is what we got to prove. This is what then then remove scope. Then you, maybe you're not ready to do a rental. Maybe we'll talk in six months. Yeah, I've said that. Be the be the person that tells them the truth. Don't be the person that tells them what they want to hear. 
because you're going to get screwed. I'm telling you that right now. Oh, yeah. You as a GC will get screwed. Yep. Uh, homeowners won't. No. You will. Last homeowner said, oh, um, legal basement, 100 grand tax in. I looked at him dead in the eyes. I said, absolutely not, sir. There's no way. Absolutely no way. Oh, what do you mean? You don't understand, do you? You don't understand. You have to fireproof this and do this and do this and do this. He goes, yeah, but that's my price. I said, you know what? When I hand you my estimate, we'll talk about it then. Took a couple of measurements and parted ways. Didn't hear back. Good. Saving you the headache. I know. When customers start off with the dollar figure, that's when I back up. That's when I say, oh, this is probably not going to go my way. That's how you vet them. Right away. If they're interested in your quality, your skill set, your team, uh, your company, if they're interested in all of that, um, then they're interested in you. Yeah. But if they're interested in a number, they're just looking for a number. If you want to be a number, then be a number. But if you don't want to be a number, then don't. Bow out, walk away. We value what we do too much. We care too much. I love what Phil does on Heavy Duty Homes. He, He schedules a call. You, like... Whatever email comes in, whatever DM comes in, whatever message comes in, it gets rerouted to him. Schedule the phone call. He speaks to them. He speaks to them for a little bit of time, and he vets them. He gets a sense of them. If they're just talking number, 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 he shuts it all down. He says, we're not the right builder, and he walks away. Yeah. If they're talking about quality. I saw your page. I saw the work. I saw all this other bullshit about that shit. Then he entertains it. Then the, it's always a, a meeting at their, their office. They start breaking it all down. Yeah. Plus, I love that he does not give his quotes to anybody. They're there. They get to look at it, and then they leave. They don't get a copy. I was unaware of that. They don't get an email copy. They don't get that. You sign the contract. Once you sign the contract, the job's yours. Now you get a copy of it. Because what they're going to do, they're going to take his copy, they're going to take his email, yeah. and they're going to price compare. All day long. Yes. Yeah. So they're back to being the number. So if, if you want to get number clients, then by all means, be the number client. It's not worth it. So uh, I can see where the conversation is going. That No breakdowns. I, that's I'll meet with you. I'll come to your house. We'll discuss it. You want to come set up an office or whatever, set up a workspace and come in, present your numbers, present everything. Can we get a copy of this? Nope. You guys want to work with us? You want to hire us? Sign a contract. Here's a contract right here. So that's a PSA to everybody. It means that they're in. It means that you're in. It means that you're both starting the same way. I also love that he no longer has a final payment. His last draw starts when dry, drywall starts. They pay the final 20% of the job. Yeah. Listen to that show, man. I, I listened. Uh, there was moments I listened to it and uh, between zoning off and this and this. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna re uh, listen to it. Uh, he's got yeah. a lot of good ideas, man. He's got a lot of great ideas. Well, I'll see where he's going. Same with Ty from uh, Nickel General. You know, he does all. I think I told you this: the post dated checks for the whole milestone, right to the last one from the day that they sign the contract. Everybody's in. Everybody's in, and now you, as a contractor, if you're a good contractor, all you have to do is what your job, which is what you love doing. That would make it a hell of a lot simpler. What we hate is chasing money. Yeah, I know. We hate it. We love the job. Yeah. It's not the money. Money didn't make me do this. If I wanted to, I would have stick to being a plumber. Yeah. Or I would have went to university or have done something with my life. I know. But I love construction because it's what I've been doing ever since I was a kid. What are the other professionals? What professions telling our potential clients what they think builds are and rentals will come? Well... You listen to the show. Anybody who knows me, f clients get their numbers from TV, from Pinterest, from House, from Google. I love that. They get it. They get it from everywhere, but the professional contractor. Mm -hmm. And then when the professional contractor gives them the number, they're sticker shocked. Well, they're wrong in my eyes, right? What about the people selling homes? What do you mean selling homes? Real estate agents. Oh, real estate agents. What about them? Do you think that they? have some sort of a especially with the whole flipping thing that's been going on in the last eight years do you think that they are coming into telling homeowners it's going to cost this but then yourself as a professional walks in and goes actually it's this do you think that they oh yeah totally yeah i mean i don't i, don't I think the majority of it i i've also heard of horror stories about uh agents actually lying about um bidding wars 
coming back to their clients and saying that the clients are asking for more when the clients already signed off on it, but they're coming back just asking for an increase because it only benefits them. They're working on a commission. A friend went through that. So if you go and you got, they're asking for another 50K, that benefits them. So you got to really be careful on who you hire as a, as a real estate agent for your, what you want to get done. I feel for anybody who's been buying houses in the last five years, man. I will say this. I, um, we've had some real estate agents, uh, unfortunately, more bad than good. One of the last ones we worked with, he was, he was pretty upfront with us, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, now, when I go look for real estate agents, or when we do, sorry, I look at um, track record of about 20 years minimum. I do not, if someone says, oh, I became a real estate agent a couple of years ago, I'm like, okay, fine. You as a person, great. Uh, what about uh, the firm you work for? I'll take that. I want to give people work. I would love to do that. Whether you're young, whatever people hire us, great. But the firm has to be at least 20 years old or that location or, or, or that broker of record or whoever it is in the real estate, like minimum 20 years. I won't touch it. I, Cause you know what? It's only going to benefit you. They don't get into the, those people are too busy doing real estate versus building. A little bit of green book talk as we get to the end of the show here, gentlemen. Uh, hazards of sealants. Oh, this is, I didn't know this. I was actually did a little bit of sealant today on tile. Actually, grout, sorry. Different say. sealants may contain hazardous chemicals. Exposure is based on volatility, how easily it can turn into gas or vapor, and its physical conditions. Spray applied foam and wet applied sealants are the most hazardous, and if proper ventilation isn't in place chemical components can migrate through a structure curing time determines the length that a product is releasing potentially hazardous volatile chemicals with isotate iso isolates to what our fuck science class plathethates formaldehyde into the air typically ms polyure cure fastest fastest in one day silicone cures within one or two days polyurethanes take about a week and buto buto yeah buto cox take mm -hmm. up to two weeks i didn't know that ms sealants may never dry if they are applied too thickly so that would be acoustic sealant yeah Black that's stuff. the whole point it's supposed to right so yeah. but it's hidden behind a wall cutting or sanding sealants or caulk can release non-volatile hazardous substances like asbestos into the air Solvent-based sealants or caulk may also be flammable during their application and until they're dry. More consumers are performing their own sealing and caulking work without PPE or safety training. That's so fucking true. At the minimum, gloves are needed and a mask may be needed if working with SPF or solvent-based items. I never knew that a caulk can kill you, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I applied... <laughs> The mape, the mastic, grout colored caulking. Yeah. That's how that smells pretty. Yeah. That's got a smell to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, gloves. Mm. It's hard. It's tricky to wear gloves and caulk at the same uh, time. I know. Especially, well, maybe exterior is different because they have the, I've seen a lot of guys use shims. Yeah. Vanguard. Yeah. I love, I've been trying to get Vanguard on the show forever, but he's just concerned about talking about caulk for 90 minutes. I think we could do it. I'm up for the challenge. <laughs> Gentlemen, we've got to wrap it up. I think we touched upon everything. Yeah. Anything else you want to chat about? Any other questions you want to ask? Uh, it's almost a, like it's it's hard to read this, man, from this government bullshit. I just... Well, uh, you know where it's going to go? It's going to make houses go uh, on the right here. We're like, oh, they're going to be paperweights. <laughs> it's true. They're going to... Give me a break. Like, I was talking. They will not last what the houses of today are lasting, right? No, like. Or yesterday, I should say. Sorry. Like, with the whole, now they're doing the um, rigid foam as sheeting. Yeah, well, that's code now. It's, AB, it's OBC code. You need the R12 on the outside. Okay. But you're so, supposed to strap it and all this other shit. Fine, I'm, I'm in for it. Uh, okay, so put the sheeting first. And then put on your, uh, sometimes these are pink. It's a pink two inch. Yeah, pink two inch yeah. or um, silver board. Careful with the silver board. Oh, actually. Oh. Reach out to Hans if you wanted to. Okay. Because there were certain things that he didn't say on the show because Hans is a gentleman. Mm. I wanted to say it, but um, he didn't want to say it. Okay. But just be careful with that silver board. 
does that look in- into it? Okay. Uh, does that silver board mean the entire company? Because they have other product. I don't really want to say, but I mean, it, the show has also taught me that there's a lot of conversation that happens after the mics are turned on. Understood. Right? So it's just like we want to tread lightly on certain things because uh, there are a lot of, bless you, there are a lot of um, companies that are very clever with their marketing and they're convincing contractors that their products are doing uh, what they're supposed to be doing when they're not. So you guys buy into that and then all of a sudden you start using this product, but it's not really doing what it's supposed to be doing. I, I just, I refer to other building consultants or energy consultants or people like Hans or even Greg LaBelle who's been on the show. And Greg's a, a professor at Ryerson regarding uh, passive building and science. Um, and I, I revert back to them about uh, the system. Like if the system is properly put together, it's not about one product and uh, associated products with that brand installed on a house that make it what it's supposed to be making it. It's how a system is installed. And if there's a if there's a, um, a failure in one component of the system, then it defeats the purpose of trying to do this. So then we have to slow down, which is what Hans was said. Slow it down. I totally believe it. Yeah. I 100% we got to slow it down. We cannot be building houses in 60, 90 days. Absolutely not putting up this foam board or this silver board or this, this, HRVs, whatever. No. Take it easy. Slow it down. These guys are working per square foot. Fine, work work the square foot. Don't come in here and make, like, these 1.5 million, I got to keep going back to that. Like, How do you slow that down when you got a loan at $100 million for 20%? You got to speed it up because I got to pay my loan off. Well, a lot of these... So even custom homes, they're that way too. First of all, someone needs to redefine the term custom home. Agreed. Or you know what word I really hate? Actually, I'll say it later. Go on. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Later when? We're going to wrap it up soon. Uh, in, in the, uh, your 10 questions. Oh, the 10 questions. Okay, I got 12 that. questions now. 12, 12. It's growing. The list is growing. Oh, perfect. Everybody, check them out. Generation Contracting. No, sorry. Generation Construction and Fine Homes LTD. Greg at GenerationConstructionLTD.com. And on Instagram and Facebook, Generation Const- Generation Con LTD. Or you can reach Justin. Maybe his inbox can start filling up rather than mine. Justin it, at is Generation. Is it Justin at Generation I'm Const- still busy every day for eight hours. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, let's go one by one. What is your favorite construction word? It's done. Done. She ain't going nowhere. <laughs> What's your least favorite construction word? Luxury. Luxury? Oh, man. Luxury? Luxury. Everything's luxury. Your vinyl's luxury. Your this is luxury. Get, give me a break. Luxury. Worst word? Uh, it'll do. What turns you on in construction, gentlemen? Going to a house, seeing what it used to, I think I said this once already on, on a previous show. Going to a house and seeing how it used to look. And then when you're finally done. And it doesn't have to be luxury finishes, everybody. It can be simple, too. Luxury. I guess, uh, like, fresh flooring. Like, brand new flooring just installed. Right when you flooring? see it, yeah. yeah. Before it's covered up? Yeah. Problem with me is I cover it up as soon as it's laid. I know well, we did that's too. what we did too. But <laughs> so you can never but see the whole thing. Before you lay, at least you can look and be like, "Yeah, this is gonna look nice," you know. What turns you off, gentlemen? Shitty people, <laughs> shitty vendors, just uh, people with a bad attitude. Favorite curse word? Uh, Talk about an ox, pretty good. <laughs> I basically say fuck right off. Like <laughs> favorite vehicle, entire world. Oh. Oh, entire world. Entire world. Entire uh, world. What was it? The Ferrari FXX. Oh, which one did you? Uh, did you want the V12 one? Oh yeah, the V12. Oh, you like the F12? Yeah, you like the F12. Yeah. In red. In red. <laughs> uh, they call that resale red. <laughs> uh, mine is still going to be the Aventador SVJ by Lamborghini. Nice uh, V12s. I mean, it's just... Uh. What's your least favorite vehicle? 
Yaris. <laughs> On a Civic. Uh, what construction sound or noise do you guys love? Uh, I don't know. Mine's a framing nailer. That's a good one. That's a good one. I'm not finishing nailer too. Because when you know things. Uh, I don't know. Like screwing in decks. I don't know. Oh, you like the impacts? Yeah. Are they? They're not Dewalt's, are they? Which? Your tools. Mine are Dewalt, yeah. That's what I thought, but yours are not Dewalt. Mine's Milwaukee. That's what I thought. Yeah, we did a little thing on it. Uh, What construction sound or noise do you guys hate? Uh, Chipping. Yeah, oh yeah, chipping concrete. Same? Uh, Yeah. So how can you guys be brothers and be Dewalt in Milwaukee? How does that work? Well, we make videos about it, then I get smoked. (laughs) (laughs) Or if he uses my impact, I'd be like, how do you like using a real drill? (laughs) What profession other than your own would you guys like to attempt one day? I'll say it again, investment banking. Uh, like a performance mechanic. What profession would you guys not like to do? Um, a surgeon. Well, I was going to go with healthcare. Like, I was in the hospital. It's, and not for anything. It, I was just basically whatever there and... You see, you see, it's like they're so understaffed. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just so bad. If heaven exists, what would you guys like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? You know, I thought about this. I don't have an answer. I took it out of the email. Did you? I don't have an. I, I don't. I, I don't have an answer. Like God's not going to say anything. I. I don't know. Like, I, I, just, I don't know. Like we're done here. We're like, oh, good job. Or like we're waiting for you. Or like, you, or I'd be like, did you forget that? Like you. The worst would be, oh, you actually forgot that like 20 years ago. <laughs> That'd be like the worst. I, I don't know. Like, welcome? You'd probably just say nice. <laughs> nice, like, nice. 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 I can't believe it. Gentlemen, thank you so much, man. It's good to see you, bro. That's let me know when the house is finished. If they're going to let you do a walkthrough or whatever, I'd like to come by and check it out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, we have some time. Yeah, that's a possibility. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. the clients, uh, uh, clients are really they're great. They're very understanding. Um, and, uh, I think it was, uh, the, the precedent I said from day one, just very, I came in there very relaxed. Is this what I'm doing? Is what I'm here for? Um, I think I got the job cause I set up a couple of meetings just to get cold since we were like, Oh no, we need to see it. So I called them and said, we have to set up a couple of meetings. I think they realized that I'm like almost over invested into it. And that's probably how we got as it. As long as you're making money, man, as long uh, as you're still profitable, right? It, it, the one way we, we looked at this project was this one's going to maybe really help us uh, get to to the next level. Yeah. Because any rental is great. We'll take it. We'll still take bathrooms. We'll still take kitchens and all that. But I think that at least what, what I want to envision our company is to do a lot of these, basically almost tear it all down. I think this was harder than a custom house. Just kind of working within that. There's restrictions. Oh, huge. You got to be more creative. Right. I'll, I'll show you what I did with one closet. Oh, no. You won't I wanna, believe I want to take a look at it. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, but. All we'll right, gentlemen. Time. We're out of here. Thank you, guys. Uh, one second. I still got to do the little uh, Generation Construction and Fine Homes with Greg and Justin. Uh, Greg at uh, GenerationConstructionLTD.com and also Justin at GenerationConstructionLTD.com and on Facebook and Instagram at GenerationConLTD and watch for the YouTube channel next year. Yeah. What's the YouTube? Have you already signed up? Or is it uh, we signed, uh, you know, at top of my head. How, Generation Con? I guess Generation Con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we, it's the same thing. I think it's yeah. the same thing. We try to mil- put everything into one little thing. Um, we don't know what we're doing yet on that. That's why we're going to release some stuff next year because we're going to take whatever our reels have now and then we're going to have to play with it. Figure it out. Okay. Thanks, yeah, yeah, if you did it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take this show and put this one on there so you can have it. I'll send you a copy of it so you have it. That would be great. I mean, first we'll release it on yours because you want everything on the rights and we're happy to be here and we're happy to help. Uh, so I make uh, this so I can share it, man. That's all it is. So. Uh, but at the end of the day, you put you put your heart and soul into this and uh, we truly respect that. And Thanks, thank you. Listen, everyone, do yourself a favor. If you're in the construction industry, just listen to at least one podcast. And it's going to help you so much. <laughs> listen, it got us this far. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you. I'm <laughs> Thanks, just trying to butter you up. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we're yeah. out of here, man. All Thanks, right. guys. Thanks, everybody.